Welcome back, Vian. Let's get straight into this market picture. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Arabi Lekumete. Straight into it then. Very interesting. The windfall coming through from the GameStop saga fell into the commodities picture. And we saw silver going up to what was a five-month high. But that, unfortunately, has fallen by the wayside with investors, uh, retail investors specifically, seeing themselves perhaps not gaining too much when it comes to that commodity picture. A whole lot more investors, of course, uh, in silver. So that just means that... The the effect was perhaps a little bit more diluted. But overall, though, if you take a broad look at this market picture, it's actually in positive territory. So if you're seeing green, that's because it really has moved in that direction, really. We start off in Asia, as usual, then more than 1% gain for the Nikkei out uh, then in Japan there. So some positive sentiment coming through out on that front. Uh, we're seeing the Shanghai Composite, though, dip down around half a percent. So it's unfortunately still negativity uh, stemming through from perhaps that manufacturing picture, which didn't look as rosy as some would have liked. Uh, for that market. A little bit more hope as well coming through for, with regards to the stimulus effort. So markets are still awaiting a little bit more out of that. If anything comes out of it, it certainly will impact the picture overall. Getting into the European market, we're getting a sense of positivity, more than two thirds of a percent higher even for the DAX out in Germany. So this lunchtime trading picture is certainly looking like a better one. Even on the local side, the all share index is seven tenths of a percent to the good today. So some positivity seeping in. Whether that's sustainable though is going to be a big question mark I suppose investors taking their cue from Asia which was mostly positive of course helping out on the local market. The industrials are the big gainers though today going up eight tenths of a percent you'll find that a lot of these are sitting in the positive segment right over here as well when it comes to uh, the stocks that have gone into some positive territory some black trading really looking good out on that front. We'll unpack it in just a second more than half a percent gain for financials and resources. Resources taking their cue from the platinum counters which have gone up nearly 1.9%. So you can tell then that some demand perhaps peeking through into those companies, perhaps the numbers are looking a little bit better off. But whether that means that the entire uh, mining industry is perhaps going to see some good over some time is going to be the question mark at hand. Some negativity though for gold miners, they've gone down 7 tenths of a percent. All of this happening, of course, in and around that uh, mining in Daba that is currently happening virtually as well. As I noted, we said we're going to speak about the stocks that have gone higher a little bit today. We are talking about the likes of Sasol, which have gained nearly 10%, 9.7 to be exact, sitting at 184 rand a share on that front. Uh, Distel has had a trading update also come out, more than 5% gain today, so they're certainly enjoying the market picture. And it seems that South Africa, even though we were in a lockdown, you still did well when it comes to volumes of alcohol. So Distel is actually going reporting a positive set of numbers. We'll unpack that in just a moment or two as well. In terms of companies that have gone down today, Steinoff unfortunately going down more than 15%, still languishing 1 rand and 69 cents a share. So I suppose not too much to write home about. Car track, which has been a solid gainer of late, has now gone down 7.4% just in today's trading picture. The likes of Harmony, Goldfields, following on on what I said about those gold miners, which have gone down as well today. Let's get into the commodity picture then. You're seeing Brent crude oil go up Eight quarters of a, eight tenths of a percent, should I say, uh, sitting at $57.91 a barrel there. Some demand coming through again, as I said, because yesterday I said that the uh, OPEC nations have decided indeed to stick to what they had planned, which was a supply cut of oil to the rest of the world, as they said they would do in February and March. And as they continue to follow that, it does mean that supply gets strained. Demand perhaps sticks to the same, if not goes a little bit higher. So the price also goes just a smidge higher. Platinum goes up ever so slightly. Gold sitting in some negative territory. Not too much to write home about on that front. And with regards to the currency... We're pretty much weaker, but only just two cents that we've lost today, actually. So we're still sitting below 15 Rand at 14.97. So still appreciating somewhat from figures we saw last week. Against the euro, we're flat around 18 Rand or so against that combined currency, while a British pound will then set you back 20 Rand and 42 cents. All of this happening in the context then, of course, of a pandemic. Michael Traherne from Vestec Asset Management joins us now to get to grips with all of this. Michael, thank you so much again good to chat to you so what more is there other than vaccines stimulus and then jeff bezos stepping down as amazon ceo to, in order to step up as executive chairman yeah i mean those are all the major themes i mean you, you would expect uh, vaccine news to be around at least for the next year or so 
stimulus talks will also be around for, for the foreseeable future. Um, and then, as you say, uh, the world's richest man, uh, it's taking some time to, to focus on the long-term strategy of Amazon instead of the day-to-day -day stuff. So he was already executive chairman and CEO. He's now dropping the CEO title and just being executive chairman. Um, and that means he's going to do less day-to-day -day stuff and a lot more of the long-term innovation is what he's saying, mm. um, which makes sense. I mean, the man's been around, uh, yeah, what, Amazon's about 25 years old. Um, I suppose it's a bit of, a bit, so there's time for, for fresh blood, someone else to, to give a bit of direction. And uh, at the end of the day, innovation is what counts. Yeah. As you noted, he, he was executive chairman and CEO for the longest time anyway and stays executive chairman in his role now. Being executive means you're still part of a great chunk of the business, maybe not necessarily day to day. But do you think investors will believe that he really has handed over the reins to somebody that has been a part of the business also uh, and Andy Jassy there for, for quite some time too? Well, for someone who's got, what is it now, $150, $200 billion worth of their net wealth uh, tied up in Amazon, um, you would say that uh, Jeff's incentives are definitely in line with uh, overall investors. Um, I will point out that uh, in the U.S., the structure is different to South Africa in terms of its CEO and chairman. In South Africa, you have to have a non-executive chairman and uh, then obviously a CEO doing day-to-day -day business, where in the U.S. it's generally executive chairman and CEO are, are piled together in, in to, to one role. So that is a bit of a difference uh, between South Africa and the U.S. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, Jeff's got lots of experience. He's saying uh, as part of uh, stepping down from CEO, he wants to focus on some of his other initiatives, um, and that's uh, part of giving back. And then also his Blue Origin, which is his space uh, company. So it'd be exciting to see what comes out of that. Yeah. Now, we'll certainly get to grips with all of that and see how it certainly works out. All right, then, uh, very quickly, also, there's the big news, of course, locally, with Distel having brought out some numbers today. Yes, revenue is flat. I mean, of course, they've gone through the aspect of a lockdown here in South Africa, but volumes, those are still actually gaining. How did we manage that in the last year? <laughs> South Africans learned from the first lockdown, I reveal it. So, yeah, Distel said for the second quarter or the second half of the year, um, revenues were flat. Uh, volumes in South Africa were down 1%, so call that uh, flat itself. But for the rest of Africa operations, they saw a very strong increase in volumes, uh, which is what helped the group quite a lot. Uh, they did say that going forward, though, there's a bit of a worry in terms of the wine industry. Uh, the wine industry is still sitting on uh, last year's uh, bottles and they've just gone into harvesting season. So they've got to find space for that and they're going to potentially have to liquidate quite a lot of those uh, the, those bottles. Um, and that could put price, price pressure in the industry in the short term. Um, but it seems like uh, South Africans were buying their spirits and buying their wines in the lead up to, to the most recent lockdown because those are the easiest to store and uh, I suppose uh, bang for your buck. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if people are actually going to go into storage mode now as well, uh, you know, with regards to the cut in, uh, or rather the opening up of South Africa's economy and a whole lot more alcohol sales bound to happen now as well. All right. Another issue that has certainly plagued the market of late is uh, um, just retail investors getting into the market a little bit more. It happened, of course, last month and particularly even last week in the United States, GameStop, Reddit, all of those names became uh, sort of household names names, if you want to call it that. I wanted to chat about whether something like that could happen locally, where retail investors, basically the man off the street, comes off with a whole lot of money, uh, bandaged together with a group of other people, and decide to have a stronghold, so to speak, on a particular share and say, well, that stock is said to be going down. I'll give you an example. Uh, well, actually, probably not, because who knows what we could do to that stock. Would an element like that happen in South Africa? Could you see a Reddit, GameStop, AMC entertainment sort of situation happen locally? Sure, I think it would be quite difficult to, to get it right in, in South Africa. The U.S. traditionally has had a, a very large retail uh, presence in their stock market, so that's, that gives them weight. Uh, the U.S. brokers also give their clients a lot bigger access to debt or leverage, as mm. it's known in the market. And that means that someone who puts a small amount of money in can move a share price quite heavily 
uh, if they band together with someone else using a lot of, of debt. Um, I, it's, I must say I, I'm drawn back to the power that Viceroy had over the South African market yes. uh, not so long ago. You remember they were the guys that called Stanoff, or potentially mm. they claimed to call Stanoff, and then uh, any stock that they commented on for at least the next year saw massive, massive uh, swings. Um, and that's a, a very similar situation here where it was uh, retail investors, I think, that were bailing in or bailing out of stocks based on rumors going around about what Viceroy was saying. So it, it definitely is possible, and it shows you uh, how volatile a market can be in the short run. But ultimately, in the long run, it's fundamentals that matter. And we've already seen the GameStop share price uh, has plummet quite heavily in the last few trading days. Yeah, it kind of tells you, I suppose, the essence. Should GameStop have issued a rights issue at that time? I mean, try to reap the best rewards out of it. Or do you think markets sort have of just said, no, there's no ways and we're not going to give you it? Yeah, probably wouldn't have got it past the investment bankers. Um, <laughs> but, you know, management could have tried. Who knows? Um, there are a few guys that are looking to invest into GameStop to try to change the business model. You know, if you raise enough money, then it doesn't matter what your business model looks like. You can reinvent yourself. Yeah. Um, but potentially that, that ship sailed. Um, you know, GameStop has been making losses since 2018. So mm. there's a reason that uh, all the hedge funds were short stock. Yeah. All right. Well, certainly an interesting market picture. Every year, just bring something new to the table. Appreciate it, though. Thank you so much for the time, Michael. Appreciate it. We'll chat soon. Michael Traherne there from Vestact Asset Management joining us to unpack that market picture. All right. Then we've got a whole lot of other news indeed coming through for you, even uh, economic news as well. Then, of course, coming to the fore. We're even going to chat a little bit later on just with regards to the pharmaceutical manufacturers getting involved locally, that being Aspen, with regards to the Johnson & Johnson. Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. We'll chat about that next.